Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series. And I have a great show today. You know, everybody that watches the show, you know that we're always talking about great entrepreneurs. And we also talk about one of my loves, food. Of course, I love to go out to eat. My wife and I, we go out all the time. We love it. And I've been able to bring an entrepreneur on the show today that's doing some remarkable things in breakfast. I mean, it's incredible, this business that he and his team have put together. The name of the, the, the breakfast company, if you will, is called OEB Breakfast. And if you're lucky enough to have an OEB breakfast in a city that you live in, you know about OEB. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody loves it. I mean, the breakfasts are beautifully put together. I mean, the portions are incredible. The taste is unbelievable. According to, you know, all of the reviews out there, it's really awesome. And also their business model is very, very interesting. We're going to talk about that as well in the way in which they're expanding. If you love business opportunity, you're going to want to listen to this whole show, especially if you love food. So Dave Orston, the CEO of OEB Breakfast Company is on the show. Dave, welcome to the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Hey, Andy, thanks for having me today. It's fantastic to be here. We're super, super excited to get a chance to talk about OEB and what we're doing. Yeah, what you're doing is so remarkable. I mean, I immediately looked to see if there was one in my neighborhood. There's not one yet, but I know there's going to be one soon. I'm ready to drive, you know, 2,000 miles to go get one of these breakfasts because everybody's talking about it, Dave. But before we get started, Let's pull the lens back like we always do, like we're famous for, to 30,000 feet. Tell us about OEB Breakfast, and then we're going to get into it. Fantastic, yeah. So primarily, we, we're a breakfast restaurant, so I don't think it's, it's new necessarily to see breakfast. We've all been going for years, but we think that we've re-envisioned a little bit what breakfast looks like. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to have an unbelievably talented chef named Mara Martinez, the founder of this company, worked in Michelin star restaurants around the world and built up some pretty amazing pedigree, but at one point decided life and family wanted to be a priority for him. And he thought, you know, breakfast is an underserved segment where I think I could bring in some pretty cool items and ingredients that I've learned to work with around the world and do something that I'm not seeing a lot of yet. And so really that's where the foundation came from. And so we serve breakfast seven to three every day. And, uh, but we do it in a way that we think is a little more meaningful. We have the regular staples. If you're looking for a two egg breakfast, you're going to find the best one you can find French toast, pancakes, a traditional Benedict, all there. But at the same time, we like to really pay attention to farms, where ingredients come from. We tour the farms that we work with. We work to find the absolute best ingredients and work on one simple principle that you can't make something great from an ingredient that's not great. So if you look at a simple egg, we'll find the best egg. We're going to focus on the ethics in farming, the quality, the ingredients, and the health benefits of working with that type of food. And we're going to find that ingredient in a way um, and find a way for us to using it in a meaningful and then creative and fun and playful way where you're going to see dishes and ingredients in breakfast that you don't traditionally see. Duck, scallops, East Coast lobster, truffles, caviar, all on our menu. Uh, so you get to try some things. If you're an adventurous diner, there's always something new and creative at OEB. Yeah, I love it, Dave. It's so interesting. You know, it's almost like going to a Michelin one, two, or three star restaurant for dinner, but you're getting it at breakfast at a price point that's available to everybody. You know, put together from a master chef, you know, the founder, and, and everybody's just loving it so much, especially. And by the way, as you're speaking, we're going to throw some photos up on the screen so people can see the breakfast. I mean, their mouth is going to be watering. You're probably going to gain five pounds, you know, just going to your refrigerator because you want to eat after seeing the photos. But let's talk about it. Because one thing that's really powerful, you really have a commitment to quality. I mean, farm to table, people talk about it, but this is really, truly responsibly sourced. I want to talk about that. We want to talk about the soul and the authenticity and the consistency and the passion as well. But there's also this business opportunity, this franchise opportunity that's really starting to take off. We want to get into that. But before we do, talk about this quality, this 
responsibly source commitment that you and your team have? Yeah, I, I think, you know, when I joined this company, it was one of the main reasons that I chose to kind of plant my feet in, in here is, is we really feel we're doing something that matters. And, you know, I think in the world we live in nowadays, large scale farming, you know, I think you, you can get into all of the modified foods and all that. We don't want to go off on a tangent there, but really, I think we're envisioning taking food back a few decades to when you went to the grocery store on a regular basis, you went to the farmer's markets, you bought from the farms and those type of mentalities are actually becoming more and more available for restaurants to work with nowadays. And so we really just like to get out tour the farms, find out what the best ingredients available to us. We try to be local as much as possible, but local sometimes might mean regional for us as well, because regionally we might be able to find a farm that really, really, really embodies what we're trying to do. Um, so when farms, we love, we love small scale farming or co-op farms that all operate under the same umbrella. Um, you'll never see an ingredient deck on a product in OEB that is full of preservatives. That's just not something that we do. It's not something we necessarily scream from the rooftops as well. We believe that people come, they eat, they feel fantastic and they leave. Um, but uh, I think they learn to trust that we care about what goes in their bodies and their children's bodies. And so it all starts with the best ingredients. Yeah, I love it. It's so great. And of course, you know, your spirited founder, you know, Mauro Martina, you know, he's been classically trained and he brought that training into the breakfast space. And really, you're turning it upside down. You're really changing the entire dynamic of the conversation about breakfast. And I love breakfast. Now, you're expanding. I mean, you know, OEB is starting to, you know, move on the warpath. I mean, it's, it's starting to pop up everywhere. I know we spoke. You have one up in Scottsdale, you know, that I frequent very often. Let's talk about a little bit, you know, let's talk about the opportunity. Are you looking for franchisees to now sort of take the, the wand and put the magic over the city that they're at? Yeah, we, we are. And, you know, one thing I didn't touch on is, you know, we're a Canadian company. That's our origin, but we've expanded into the U.S. with our first uh, Arizona location in Scottsdale and just uh, recently opened a Newport lo Beach location that's that's doing fantastic. So, you know, we're, we're ambitious in that we want to grow and we want to grow well. And I think to me, franchising is not always done well. It's the very often becomes about growth, about getting locations, but we're about finding the best partners who really believe in what we're doing. Um, we're not just looking to sell a restaurant. We're looking to bring our brand in a way that we're proud of to new markets. So it's a little bit of maybe a harder way to do it, but if uh, we want to maintain our standard of ex excellence, then we've got to keep searching for the best partners. But I think uh, you'll start to see us popping up in cities uh, near, and dear to you. <laughs> yeah, I love it, of course. And this thing that really resonates, that really can be found through the entire fabric of what you're doing with this remarkable business is, is really one word. It's called soul. I mean, not only are you driven by connections, driven by the local marketplace, driven by, of course, these great people that are uh, thinking about opening one of your restaurants in their community, but you're looking for people, entrepreneurs that have a soul, that really believe in what they're doing, that want to give back to the community, that want to be authentic. And I love that so much. It looks to me like you're really building an honest and transparent business with the people that you bring on board. Let's talk about that. Where did that idea that soul is so important to the entire fabric of the business come from? Is that from you, your founder, or some collaborative effort therein? You know, ultimately, it actually came from our founder originally, and but it's become something that has grown into much more than we ever anticipated. You know, we uh, have the tagline, fill the soul somewhere in every single one of our restaurants. And to us, fill the soul, uh, it's, it's a wide sweeping brush, I guess, so to speak. But, you know, it talks about filling the soul through great dishes and food, through company, through human connection. So we say we strive to fill the souls of our partners, our staff and our patrons every single day. 
But, you know, to, to us, you know, soul is just a word that embodies a feeling that we're trying to create. And, you know, maybe you could say it's hospitality. Maybe you could say it's comfort, but it's, it's really having a connection, realizing that we're all humans and this is an industry where we connect and we have great food and uh, we commune. And we're hoping that we can play a little part in that. Yeah, I love it so much. I mean, one thing that's very fun also is the way you name your plates. I mean, you've got the scrambled crepe and the double trouble and the coke madame. And really, you're taking the best of what the chef knows how to do and put it into a morning sort of extravaganza. I love it so much. Now, you also have some meatless uh, type opportunities as well. So let's talk about that balanced menu that you have at the company. Yeah, for sure. The The fun and playful names are just part of who we are. I think we try and, and bring in some of these elevated ingredients, but we don't want to be pretentious. We want to become as you are. We want to be fun. So those names give a chance to just kind of embody who we're trying to be there. And in regards to different menu items that you'll see across the men, the, uh, uh, the the menu, they're just really creations that um, inspire really techniques and food that you've seen kind of through the ages, but kind of re-envisioned. We're very famous for our poutine bowls. And uh, for the Americans, many of them may not know what a poutine is, but this is our re-envision of a classic poutine, which is fries, curds, and gravy. Um, but in OEB, we just twist it around a little bit. We do herb fried duck fat potatoes. Um, they're topped with the best cheese curds that you can find brown butter hollandaise, perfectly poached eggs, tons of different options as far as proteins from salmon to tuna to uh, bacon lardons and duck. And so we kind of re-envision stuff. That's partly how we approach that. Yeah, I love it, David. Of course, you have the soon to be famous, already famous in the local market, Get Shorty Rib Poutine, which seems to be, you know, something that's just flying off the shelf as well. Listen, I love it so much. Let's talk about a little bit when somebody reaches out to you and they say, hey, we've heard about this. I visited a restaurant. I want to open one up. What's that conversation sound like for the potential, you know, passionate, you know, soul driven, you know, entrepreneur that maybe wants to open one of your OEB franchises? Yeah, the conversation to me, it's, it's, it's two part. There's, there's the business side of it, you know, understanding the model, the finance and, and the success of a, a partner is always built on, you know, having the financial stability to do well. So that will always be part of the conversation. But to us, it's about the person. It's about understanding their goals, whether they're aligned with our goals and whether they really, really, really believe what we're doing. Um, we're very fortunate because we're a brand that has made an impression on many people. And when they come to us, they're very often just excited to see this opportunity and how it can uh, become part of what they want to do. And then secondary to that, we've been very fortunate to have a very good success story and um, successful partners want to grow. And so as we build inside our own company, we're seeing more and more opportunities with a store that's doing quite well. And now people are looking for the opportunity to do a second and a third and a fourth. And uh, so that's uh, another avenue, but it's just about really, really smart people that are focused on great business operations and understand and believe in what we're trying to accomplish. So, yeah, I love it, Dave. And of course, you know, one thing on the menu that caught our attention, you have something called don't even go there, you know, and it's, it's just a great name. I mean, French style crepe with vanilla custard and berries and banana and fresh whipped cream and pistachios and almonds. I mean, sounds unbelievable. Now, for the people working at the restaurants. Let's talk about the team. In order for someone to come on board, whether they're working behind the scenes in the kitchen or out front, you know, helping the customers, what types of people are you interested in hiring? I mean, is there some certain aspect about them or their personality? Are you looking for people with passion or a fun attitude or a get it done attitude? Who are you looking for to join the team? Great question. You know, there's, there's an aspect of it that's always surprised me in OEB. And we are very fortunate to be a brand that one is successful and people are always attracted to something successful. But two, being a morning operation, you see a lot of people who've worked their share of nights and they're suddenly looking for an opportunity to build a little bit of lifestyle. And so that allows us to attract sometimes a more mature 
um, server or cook or chef that's coming in looking to make a little bit of a change. So that becomes appealing and it actually helps us bring a candidate to the table very often that is quite easy to make a connection with. And then we really just dig into the same type of, I guess, foundations that we talk about with franchise partners. It's like, it's who are you as a person? What brings you here? You know, what drives you? What goals in life do you have? People that, that are passionate about something in their life will be passionate about their job. And so we, we, we look for uh, people that love excellence. And uh, really, I guess if you're in the kitchen, you got to be passionate about food. You got to love what we're doing in the front house. You got to be passionate about people and it doesn't hurt uh, to be passionate about food as well. We, br we bring them in. So. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Of course, everybody that watches this show, you know, I tell the story of one of my first jobs as a bus boy when I was 14 years old and I loved it. I mean, I loved being out there and, you know, uh, seeing people eat and get around a table and have some communication and, and bring their families and their friends to a table to have some great food is always remarkable to me. And I love the way in which that brings people together in a very welcoming space. And then everyone can tell their own unique stories and everybody can sort of learn and teach and inspire each other around some good food. And I think that's one of the concepts that you're providing in this exceptional, ever-evolving experience that you provide at OEB, right? It is. I think, you know, the the age-old principle of gathering, right, and communing is is really uh, an important part of what we do. And especially after the last couple of years, we haven't got to spend enough time together. So being able to come in and relax and know that you can count on an ex excellent meal and excellent service and be able to take care of allows you to just let the world slide away for a few minutes and focus on the people you're with. And those moments are few and far between. I, I once had a mentor that told me, he said, when you're working in in, uh, in the restaurant, he said, I want you to remember one thing. He said, people have money. People struggle schedules. They, they are working so hard to figure out how the kids will operate at soccer, how they operate at getting them to dance and getting between jobs. He said, when they come to a restaurant, don't let them down. They're not worried about the money. They're worried about their time. So he said, focus on that time investment and let them know that they're in good hands and they can enjoy the time with the people they have. Yeah, it's great advice. Focus on that time investment. You know, they're there and you want them to have a great experience. I think when I think of, you know, OEB and I think of other restaurants, one thing that stands out is you want the people to be or to have a wonderful experience. I'm almost calling it an experiential experience, if you will. Is that sort of the idea? It really is. You know, I, I don't think it's it's far to say that, you know, any restaurant, you have to remember that we're really in the entertainment business, right? We're on stage, we're putting on our persona to make sure that we are taken care of, and we're imparting positive energy, that every plate that comes out of that kitchen has a purpose, and that we are really striving to make sure that our standard of excellence is always achieved at every touch point. And uh, it's, it's a very accurate point. I love it. Let's talk a little bit about the franchise model. Let's talk about where it's going. Uh, let's talk about Canada. Are there available opportunities? Then we'll talk about the United States. Are there still available opportunities? Yeah, opportunity is one thing. There's lots of for sure. You know, Canada. We are. We've been. Uh, we're based in Western Canada, so our, our presence in Western Canada is very, very strong. We're we're growing quickly. Vancouver is a market that is uh, definitely has some opportunity. We've opened uh, a couple new locations there over the last year. Uh, just opened our first location in Toronto. Our second and third are on the way. Um, spreading throughout the prairies and uh, and then into the U.S. That is exactly where our attention is uh, focused right now because we've now got opportunities to grow in a way that we think is healthy by being able to build a foundation of working into uh, the Northwest, uh, getting into Washington, coming out of Vancouver, where we have a presence and strong operations. And then when you get into Arizona, California, Texas, those are areas that we've got our energy and our sites focused on uh, and lots and lots of irons in the fire. We're working on leases. We're working at looking at some amazing sites, um, you know, lots of conversations in part with partnerships down there. Amazing partner in California that's planning on doing lots of locations there. And uh, we're just now really getting the energy and the plan together to start uh, stepping a little deeper into the water. So. Yeah, I love it. It's going to be great. Of course, so many people throughout the, you know, 
North America are going to be eating this incredible food. Let me talk a little geeky, get a little nuts and bolts just for a second. When you open up in, let's just say, Washington or in Eastern Canada, who look, who's the who's the group that goes out and sort of makes the connections with all the local farmers and the local people so that you can keep that local sort of flavor at OEB? Right now, that's all done by um, myself, our chef and founder, and uh, another chef on our team that uh, leads our food and beverage program. And uh, But primarily, Chef Morrow gets his fingers on every ingredient. And I love it. You know, I have some of my most amazing uh, photos that I had across my table over the last couple of months were Chef Morrow touring the Santa Monica Farmer's Market in California. And you want to see a guy light up and get inspired, send a chef to a farmer's market. I'll tell you, he'll pick up a carrot and you will think it was a diamond. It was, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to watch. But right now we just take uh, the effort to send the best to tour and see as we grow, we'll be building out those teams and uh, onboarding and developing more chefs that really really understand the vision and get involved but uh right now the man morrow goes for most of it so that's great dave of course you know we, we've only cut out a certain amount of time you've only cut out a certain amount of time you're so busy building and you know providing this great experience to people before we go i was wondering you know there's different taste palettes throughout north america throughout Canada, you know, people in the South, maybe they like their food a little more spicy than the people up in the Midwest. You have a great menu. Are you going to be changing the menu slightly depending on the area or do you keep the same menu? Uh, absolutely. I think evolution of, of every territory is going to be dependent on the consumer. And you're already seeing our menu is slightly varied in, uh, in Arizona, it's slightly varied in, in California, and we're already making some adjustments and tweaks to uh, kind of work off the feedback that we receive. The core tends to be very popular. People people love the the base of the menu, but uh, yeah, it's also I think from a culinary program really exciting to be able to work with ingredients that are more readily available or maybe don't exist in certain areas. And so we touch really quickly on the meatless options like California. The the produce in in the southern states is inspiring because the quality is so high. So that's actually. Um, kind of kicked off an entire evolution of menu development that we're looking to roll out with working with eggplant and bruschetta and different ingredients that now are going to be seen on our menu that uh, really were inspired from a lot of our time in California working with these great produce vendors. Yeah, I love it, Dave. You're making everybody hungry that's watching the show. Before I let you go, I want to talk about entrepreneurship. You know, we have younger entrepreneurs, older entrepreneurs, you know, watching the show and Sometimes entrepreneurs, they hit a tough time. Maybe they hit a pothole in the road. Maybe they hit a roadblock or a wall. I mean, we all do. All entrepreneurs hit those roadblocks. I mean, if you're not hitting a roadblock or have some challenges as an entrepreneur, it just means you're not pushing hard enough, right? But for the younger entrepreneurs and older entrepreneurs that are maybe hitting a roadblock, maybe based on your background and experience, Dave, you could share some insight on what it takes for those entrepreneurs to get through a tough time and keep on pushing. Oh, wow. What a, what a great question. You know, we've all, we've all been there. We've, we've hit the wall at some point. You know, if I look back at my, myself, I, I think the things that have driven me through those tough times are, one, if I personally, I've always had an extremely strong work, like work ethic. I'm someone that's very highly driven. Um, but I think there's really probably a couple of key points that have carried me through that. And the biggest is probably the people that I've surrounded myself with, you know, that core of team that you build, they'll carry you sometimes when you don't even know you need to be carried. And that, that development and, and team that you build will get you through there. I think planning and agility is probably are the strongest uh, suits from a technical aspect. If you stop, and you refocus, you build a solid plan, and you know that you can be agile when it comes time to adjust. Surround yourself with great people and know that you just got to work hard. There is a light always at the end of the tunnel, and some of the tough moments uh, build the best character, but they've always taken us uh, to the right places. So. Wow, Dave, what great advice, of course. You know, Mauro Martina, you know, the classically trained chef and the spirited founder, you know, and you are just leading the charge, doing great work. 
I'm so excited to have had you on the show here early on. I mean, I, I won't even be able to book you probably in another 12 months or 18 months. Things are going so well. And you're feeding so many people and making a true quality soul sort of relationship for people with food, which I love so much. So Dave, I want to thank you so much for coming on the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series today to talk about OEB, talk about not only what you're doing, but the opportunity and the great uh, partners that you're currently talking to and that you've already established relationships with and the incredible team, everybody from the people in the kitchen to the front. What a great organization you've put together. And thanks so much for coming on the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series today. Oh, amazing. Thanks for having us. It's been a pleasure and just appreciate the opportunity to talk about OEBs. Yeah.